Man, it is almost go time. What a great week. What a great week of talking Tennessee football. Just just the energy. Like going into this game, you know, it's it's just game after game. It keeps getting bigger and more important. More spe- and it's we're talking about Tennessee, Alabama in year two of Josh Heupel. Everything's on the line tomorrow afternoon. I can't wait, man. I cannot wait. It's go time. I mean, it's it, it's a big one, brother. Any way you want to spin it. I mean, uh, you know, of course, you got undefeated. You got t- teams in the top ten. You've got my stupid microphone is not one to work here. Apologies. You got two teams in the top ten undefeated. First time that's happened at the same time since 1989. Uh, last time the two teams met, and they were both ranked inside the top ten was in 2016. Uh, Tennessee's lost the last 15 meetings. I mean, we can go on, we go on. We have the game notes. You know, we all know that, right? But what I want to ask you first and foremost is something I've been asked a lot this week. Um, You got the big three. You got Florida, Georgia, Alabama. You know, you and I, it's been a lot of Tennessee losing throughout our lifetimes, obviously, a lot of our audience as well. But if you ask a lot of, you know, people around this this rivalry, this game means so much to them. And if you ask Alabama fans, they'll say Tennessee's a bigger rivalry than than, than Auburn a lot of the times. Where does Alabama, when you say Alabama, what does that mean for you, the Tennessee fan? Like it's it's immediately immediate hatred, and like yeah. you know these these some of these Alabama fans they come onto YouTube and they're like, man, we 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 really wish you guys were good again. It's like that that is such a backhanded like conflict. Like what are you talking? No, I I loved when Phil Fulmer owned Alabama, when Tennessee dominated Alabama. Let's get back to that. People talking about you know the storyline this week is Bryce Young going to play? Is he not going to play? And yeah, we're recording this the magic of the internet a little before Friday, so we still don't know. I don't care. I don't care if Bryce Young plays. Somebody in the fan call-in show for us this week said, I don't care if Nick Saban's out there taking snaps. It does not matter. Go take care of business. Go beat Alabama. But when you're talking about the streak and how long Tennessee's been down in this thing, it, it doesn't feel like a rivalry. And we kind of joke about you know the way Tennessee dominated teams like Vanderbilt and Kentucky. And then, of course, even that's not been as successful for Tennessee in recent years. But we, we never looked at Vanderbilt or Kentucky as a rival. When you dominate a team for that long, I don't know that Alabama does consider us a rival at this point. It's time to go out and punch them in the mouth on Saturday and let them remember what this rivalry is supposed to be. And it's sad, like you said, a lot of a lot of people in this fan base uh, never saw success in this rivalry. I remember going to Neyland Stadium. I, I, I'm not even sure what year it was, but it was in the 90s. I mean, I was really, really young. And I remember it was like one of the first years I could easily go look this up. But uh, <laughs> it was like one of the first years that Alabama beat in Tennessee. I think Tennessee won like five or six or seven in a row at that point. And then Alabama won that game. And I just remember Neyland just – it was awful. There were fights in the stands. And, I mean, it was just – it was such a horrible environment. Now, I, I remember that moment. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm, you know, the Tennessee will get him next year, you know, as a young kid. And then just thinking, you know, where you are now, it's like, gosh, it's been 15 years um, you know, since Tennessee's won, it's, it's truly uh, incredible. But I've said it all week. I don't know if Tennessee will win this football game, but Tennessee can win this football game. I mean, there's a path to victory here. I don't even if Bryce Young's playing because of what you have on the other side. So I'll ask you this, Boogie: How? What needs to happen for Tennessee to pull off this upset? And mind you, this upset. I mean, sure, it's an upset, but it's only seven, seven and a half right now. That, that was the biggest thing to me is I was kind of surprised. I thought maybe maybe two touchdowns, two scores at least. That that tells you that Vegas truly believes that Tennessee can go and compete on Saturday. To get it done, you, you have to play clean football. Alabama's shown. They, they, show, they showed it against Texas. They showed it against Texas A&M. They are beatable, even like you said, even if Bryce Young plays. And if he does – there's no way that kid's 100%. Yeah. Regardless, no matter, if, if everybody on both teams are healthy, Tennessee can go out and win on Saturday, but they have to play clean football. You can't turn the ball over. History tells us that Hendon Hooker is going to protect the football, but the fumbles, you know, Hooker had a couple last week. He got lucky on them. Jalen Wright continues to struggle with ball security. We've gotten lucky. Tennessee cannot afford to turn the football over. And on the flip side of that, if Alabama, if you force them to make a mistake, you have to capitalize on it. I think we talked about it Monday morning when you were on my show. You got to go get six. You know, it didn't hurt them last week against LSU. You know, you had an opportunity to go up 14 to nothing out of the gate. You got the field goal. You're still up two scores. Didn't matter. 40 to 13, that's a blowout. That's domination. You can't do that against Alabama. Going out and having Chase McGrath kick four out of five field goals ain't going to beat Alabama. No, you got to finish those drives, no doubt. And, uh, you know, 100 and, you know, 18, 20 yards, whatever it was, and penalties. I mean, that that can get you beat in a game like this. I've been saying that all week long. Uh, having a slow process with the punt team, you know, that can get you beat because Alabama can go get it. I mean, every – I sound like a coach here, but 
every tiny little thing that you do wrong can matter in a game like this because Alabama is Alabama. Now, you know, take Young out of the equation, take Will Anderson Jr. out of the equation on defense. You know, this Alabama offense, it's got Jameer Gibbs, who's fantastic. I mean, he's leading receiver, leading rusher. He'll line up wide. He'll line up in the backfield, you know, whatever. He'll line up in the slot. But the other receivers for Alabama, no John Mitchie, no uh, James Williams, you know, no, no, none of these guys, Devonta Smith, there's none of those guys here. I think they're beginning to settle down a little bit, but I, I and they're they're still quick and athletic, and I'm, I'm not trying to diminish it. But I think in terms of the overall, uh, you know, first round draft talent at the wide receiver position, I'm not seeing that in this year's group right now. And, and I feel like Tennessee's got to take advantage of that, obviously, because they're going to be looking at Jameer Gibbs a whole lot more to where they'd be looking to the outside in years past. Yeah, that, that's the whole the, – the intriguing part about this matchup is can Tennessee stop Jameer Gibbs yeah, because I think he's the best running back in the country. Uh, people can argue or disagree with me. I, I think he's an absolute stud. And, and the fact that, you know, you talk about the wide receivers kind of not being at that level they were at one point. The, the fact that Jameer Gibbs has the most receptions for Alabama, that, that tells you all you need to know. And, you know, I, it's going to be intriguing to watch on Saturday. Can Tennessee stop the ground game? Especially if if Young doesn't play. If Young doesn't play, what what's that game look like? And I heard you guys talking about it on the VolQuest podcast uh, earlier in the week. Does Alabama? Does Nick Saban trot Ty Simpson out there? Because I think he does. I, I mean, it's I, I, becoming more more realistic that that happens. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm not saying that he starts. I'm not saying that he plays 30 snaps. But I just I, I don't feel like especially say say you're in a shootout of some sort. Say that Tennessee's offense is humming and it's scoring and and you know. <laughs> Alabama's trying to keep pace, right? I mean, that's just so that's just so weird to even say. Um, they're gonna have to throw the football a little bit. I just don't know if I, I I don't know if anybody knows if Milrow can do that consistently. I just think they'd have a better opportunity with Ty Simpson if it comes down to it. But we say all this, and Young's gonna go out there and play and not, not miss a snap and throw for three touchdowns. I'm sure. Do you uh, think he plays? Like, do you really think he plays? I just don't see it. Throwing earlier arm- in the week, I would have said no. Earlier in the week, I would have said no. As the week's gone on, I feel like he's going to give it a go. But as you pointed out, I mean, there's no way he's 100. percent No way. Um, it, it's a, it's a it's a. If you're Nick Saban, it's like if I'm Nick Saban, I'm sitting here thinking, and again, this is a testament to Tennessee. I'm sitting here thinking, I need Bryce Young to play in this football game to win. Uh, can can Alabama win without Bryce Young? Of course it can. Of course it can. But. If I'm Nick Saban, I'm saying I need Young to win this football game. It's a lot to gamble to hold him out of this football game and say you lose this game to run the table and then get on to the college football playoff. You can do it. You can certainly do it, but that, that that's a big gamble. So as the week's gone on, I feel like I feel like there's going to be more more to it that we see from him. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm not a doctor, and uh, you, you you had a quarterback that came out fully dressed out and and you know stood out there for pregame warm ups just to play the mind game. And of course, it didn't take a snap. Yeah, I just don't know. And and if he does play, get after him. Get aggressive. Yeah. Bring pressure. Hit him. I don't ever wish injury on anybody, but, hey, that's part of football. That's part of the game. I think you talked about it You know, during that pit week. You have to give Tennessee's defense credit for yep. knocking quarterbacks out of the game. And, you know, if, if Bryce Young's out there and he's beat up, what does he look like? Does, does, he, does he make mistakes? Is, is he pushing? Is he forcing? Uh, and then on the flip side, if he doesn't play, the big thing that I've been kind of been talking about this week, and it's why Nick Saban does what he was does. It's why Josh Heupel's not going to tell you if Cedric Tillman's playing. It's because Tennessee now has to game plan for two different quarterbacks, and not only two different quarterbacks, two drastically different quarterbacks. You know, oh, yeah. if Milrow plays, stay in your st- gap integrity is huge. Keep him bottled in. Keep him in the pocket. That kid looks like an NFL running back. He he, he does like. When he's out in the open, he is dynamic, he's electric, but he's not very good with his arm. Bryce Young, on the other hand, different type of game plan, man. That That's that's a big challenge for Tim Banks and this defense heading into tomorrow's game. Huge, huge challenge. All right, man. You already uh, you already went out and gave your score prediction early in the week on the uh, Talking of Vols network. I want you to bring you on here to Locked On Talking Vols. Your score prediction for Tennessee and Alabama – and just anything else about this game that you're that you're watching for that needs to happen for Tennessee to win? Just anything else about this game before we head into what we hope is an incredible football game tomorrow? Well, I, I said it. I said it after they beat LSU. I am not picking against this football team until they lose because people, and you know how people are. Oh, they're going undefeated, twelve and zero. Feels like ninety eight. 
And then even people saying 10 and 2, I'm like, there is no way this football team goes 10 and 2 this year. I am not doubting Josh Heupel has this team dialed in, firing on all cylinders. They believe. They believe when, when, when they said, let's just go to Atlanta. Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's just go to Atlanta. Let's just win every game. Uh, the big matchup still, like I said earlier for me, can this Tennessee rushing defense, what are they, fifth in the country, I think, giving up 89 yards a game on the ground? They're elite at stopping the run. If Bryce Young doesn't play, can they can they stop Jameer Gibbs? Can they contain Jameer Gibbs? If it's Milrow, he's going to make plays. It, it is what it is. You may be able to force him into some mistakes with his arm. Does Hindenooker continue to not turn the football over? Can they protect the ball? There so many questions, but the bottom line is, as we've kind of said throughout this 10-minute segment, Tennessee can and will compete with Alabama on Saturday. There's a reason the line is as low as it is. There's a reason a lot of these ta- talking heads are picking Tennessee to win. I'm going in a shootout, man. I, I, I've said over and over I like Tennessee in a shootout against anybody in the country. Alabama looks beatable. I think it comes down to the wire. Tennessee's going to win 38-35. The goalposts are coming down. They're going in the river, and it's time to celebrate and start skipping ahead and making Josh Heupel irate as we start looking at Georgia instead of everybody else. <laughs> All right. There you have it. The goalposts are coming down. Boogie's calling a Tennessee win over Alabama. And if that happens, the internet is going to come down because you guys are going to be live right after the game for the postgame show, right? Complete chaos. I told them they were laughing after the LSU win. They said, Boogie, what's going to happen if Tennessee beats Alabama? I said, we're staying live all night long we're gonna light up cigars probably piss off everybody's wife as the smoke fills the air (laughs) in all the man caves across the country it's gonna be great it's gonna be a celebration that's the beauty of the talking balls network on youtube it is truly for the fans by the fans it is a celebration or we drown our sorrows together so uh, hopefully we're celebrating tomorrow night after the game